after 352, turn to Delta, about off the tower. Right close traffic approved, runway 35 clear for takeoff. Uh, right close traffic approved, runway 35 clear for takeoff, 352 Tango Delta. Okay, welcome back. This is the sixth flight, and this time I'm going to be testing some changes to the aileron setup and also to the CG. Approaching runway 35. Entered runway 35. 7,900 feet remaining. And as you can hear there, I also have ForeFlight hooked up on the iPad and it's uh, transferring its audio cues uh, back into the Garmin Avionics. So what I've done here is I've rigged the ailerons so they're basically um, sort of drooping down at the neutral position and that way uh, when they come under load, the aerodynamic load will um, straighten them back out again and so they'll be basically pre-tensioned and there's going to be less chance of them sort of even a, the slightest sort of flapping around that may cause a sort of you know undulating roll effect uh, and I've also moved the CG forward just a little bit to see how that affects everything. Yeah, that was probably my cleanest lift off uh, up till now, and the gear goes up. Okay, zero one three one and one thirty two thirty seven on the Africa. And as you can probably tell, I've fixed the audio. I'm back on my Bose headset, so I've been able to adjust the levels for recording and getting everything sounding much better. Uh, about off the tower, 6582, uh, ready to go number one at Alpha One, and 0131 on the uh, code, and 3237 on the frequency. And the ceilings were a little bit low, so I wasn't able to climb, but I was able to pick up a bunch of data from this flight uh, regardless. Cessna 6582, left turnout approved, runway 35, clear for takeoff. 3035, left turnout approved, 6582, here we go. And as you can see, I've put a lot more uh, telltales on the um, flying surfaces there on the right-hand side of the aircraft. And uh, you know, I've already had a bunch of time to analyze uh, all this to see you know, what's going on. And really the takeaways are is there's um, definitely, as you'd expect, a vortex uh, spinning off of the uh, outboard edge of the floor plane there. But actually right at the trailing edge there of the elevator, it's actually spinning um, in a clockwise motion, which is really interesting. So there's some other sort of turbulent thing happening there um, from the elevator. Traffic, two o'clock, two miles, 1,000 feet below. Other than that, um, the air moving across the floor plane seems fine. The stability and roll seems to be uh, improved. Um, and you'll see in the under wing camera um, shortly what I mean about the ailerons. But what I've been noticing out here on the um, on the wing, and I'll show you um, a point here in a little bit, there's a little bit of a disturbance there where the straight to wing transition is, and I'm not sure yet if it's being caused by that new borderline I put in there, or um, potentially by you know the vortex coming off the tip uh, of the elevator. Uh, but I'm going to remove that borderline for the next flight, and then just see if I have the same uh, thing showing up. Tesla 6582, contact the Have a good day. Over to the parts circuit. Yeah, if I just pause this real quick and you look at the aileron there, you can see it's in the completely neutral um, position, uh, even though the trim tab is slightly down, uh, wanting to hold it up. And the other aileron is also completely neutral. So that change that I made to droop them has now uh, made them stay nice and level, which has uh, made the stability uh, much more improved. Raptor 2, Tango Delta, runway 352, touching us. I just see a high approach over the runway, uh, 352, Tango Delta. Raptor 2, Tango Delta, runway 352, for the option. Uh, runway 352, clear for the option, uh, 2, Tango Delta. And if you also look at the Garmin display here in the, in the left corner, you'll see that um, in this sort of cruise uh, attitude here, that the ship is flying completely nose level, so zero degree um, angle of attack, which is ultimately what I'm looking for. All right, if you pay attention to the telltales that are at the midpoint there where the straight transitions to the wing, 
you can see there's nothing really going on there with respect to any of those telltales, but I'll show you a little bit coming up when it's uh, going a little slower, uh, what's happening there. Uh, but right now, for, you know, with this faster speed, it's uh, nice and stable and smooth, all those telltales there. And I did get the aircraft up to, I think, 159 indicated. Um, yeah, around about here, I'm coming around there again for this high pass. And overall, I think the aircraft feels more stable in the roll axis uh, with these changes. It was still a little bit gusty um, up at, you know, 13, 12, 1300 feet there. But I, I definitely wasn't noticing it as much that you would sort of get this sort of rocking, um, rolling sort of motion there. So I think the fact that the ailerons are sort of more pinned is uh, helping that um, to not be a problem. One mile final runway 35 at Kilo Victor Lima Delta. Warning, airport not in current route. Thank you, Siri. Uh, <laughs> I'll have to see how much I like that. I think you can adjust all those different um, playbacks on there. It's kind of nice to have um, a sort of co-pilot along there announcing things, especially traffic advisory, that's good. Oh yeah, so you can see telltales there look pretty good. And you know, nice and level again. Just you know, very happy with how it was feeling. And I just went around sort of a figure eight, and then um, came into land. I was looking at the temperatures again. Still um, not you know 100% happy. And I've got a couple of ideas that I'm thinking about, but I really need to take it up to about 4,000 feet and see what it does up there with respect to the temperatures. Because if all my cooling problems go away when I'm up at 4,000 feet then I don't really need to make any big adjustments at this point. The goal is to get the aircraft here 40 hours flown um, as, just as safely as I can and then move it over to the west coast and then we can stay, start making some changes but the idea is to get it over there so we can get on with the production plan. Raptor 2 Tango Delta, left closed traffic approved, report midfield. Uh, left closed traffic approved, report midfield, uh, 2 Tango Delta. And if you look back on the last video where I had this camera turned slightly to the left, um, you could see that those telltales behind the wheel well there were actually very smooth. So even having that half opening there on the wheel well isn't really causing a problem, which is um, a plus because I thought that, that was still going to be uh, quite a bit of turbulence back there. So as I mentioned earlier, I did change the CG as well for this flight. I put another four and a half pounds um, right up in the nose where I have the other ballast and that moved the static margin from about 10% to about 10.38 or 10.4%, so just slightly forward. Um, you know, not, not more than about, um, I think, a quarter of an inch or half an inch forward, so just a little bit. Um, but at this point, I think, you know, this is all just tuning and getting things dialed in. So making big changes is not something that I want to do at this point um, when, you know, things are starting to feel good. And so I was watching the temperatures here, and I was like, all right, starting to get sort of around 240 on the oil temps. And uh, so I just made the decision that because I couldn't climb uh, anymore, um, you know, because of the clouds, I made the decision, uh, you know, just to come in and look at all the data for this. But yeah, I didn't have any problems this time. No close calls with birds or anything, and nothing flew off the aircraft like last time. So uh, all good. Tower to Tango Delta is midfield. Uh, this will be full stop landing. Raptor to Tango Delta, runway 35, clear to land. Runway 35, clear to land, to Tango Delta. And I've tried to turn off the stabilization on this camera so it doesn't sort of rock or roll independent of the cabin, but it still wants to do it. It's just the way the Garmin camera works. Um, you know, these other Sony ones that I have, um, they allow you to lock the lens there, so which is what you're seeing on this view there. So you don't feel so seasick watching it when the aircraft's moving around a little bit. Um, so you'll see the gear coming down here in a little bit. And then one other thing I did uh, on short final, which I'll point out, um, I actually went to push like full rudder left and right just to see how that's affecting um, the controls. Uh, the rudders are fairly tight uh, aerodynamically speaking so you have to put, push pretty hard on the rudder um, pedals in order to get the rudders to deploy 
uh, when you're going fast like this. Uh, that's mainly because those cables aren't really pre-tensioned, they're just sort of snug. And when you press on them, uh, you've got to take up all that slack and then stretch them a little bit before you actually get the rudders to deploy. But there's enough authority in there that you can really kick the nose around. Um, and also, you know, it uh, establishes quite a hefty roll when you push on the rudder on that side and roll, you know, wing down. Okay, so right there you can see I've kicked in a decent amount of rudder and then uh, watch what happens. So there's a bit of a lag and then that wing drops and then I did the same thing on the other side. So that wing drops on the other side. Um, so there's definitely some authority there and, and that you know, induces quite the roll. So I've just got to be sort of, you know, um, coordinating with the ailerons when I'm doing that. Raptor 2 Tango Delta 10 right at Foxtrot, hold short, Alpha, contact ground point 7. Uh, right at Foxtrot, hold short at uh, Alpha ground on point 7, 2 Tango Delta. Alright, so I wanted to point out what was happening at the straight transition there with the telltales. If you look at those ones there right near where I put that new portal on, you can see that one there, the, the closest one, keeps sort of lifting up a lot and the one behind it is, is you know, running outboard and every now and then the second row is doing the same thing. So there's definitely some sort of turbulence happening in that little area there. And uh, I'm not sure if it's from that Vortalon itself um, or there's just some you know, spanwise flow because of the difference of the shape of the wings there with the sweep, different sweep or if potentially there's a very narrow vortex coming off of the foreplane because it's the, the trailing edge of the foreplane is directly, uh, or the outboard edge of the foreplane is directly in line with this position. It would have to be a very tight vortex in order to just affect those things there, so that's highly unlikely. But um, it's interesting to, to watch that telltale to see what it's doing there. It's not, it doesn't seem to be affecting the role of the aircraft at all. I don't see it sort of initiating anything um, you know, like it was before. I really think the aileron Tightening up those ailerons has really made a difference in terms of the roll stability, and you know, obviously moving the CG forward never hurts as well. Um, but I will take off this Vortalon here for the next flight and just you know have the same camera angle here and have a look and, and see what's going on. But you see, once I get level here um, on the downwind, it pretty much goes away. But every now and then, you just see it pop up like there's just a little disturbance causes that one to pop up. Anyway, that's going to be my update for this time. Um, as I said, so next flight will be uh, hopefully taking the aircraft up to a bit more altitude um, with that Vortalon removed, and uh, we'll just see how things go. And if I still have problems cooling, um, I'm going to be looking into the next little thing that I have planned uh, for potentially improving things with respect to the cooling. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, tune in again for the next one. Cheers.